530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. The cool, clean, and secure. The all-new Mike Burks Ford in Blackshear saves you big money with 0% interest on select new Fords. Ask our salespeople about saving over $10,000 on a brand new Ford F-150, America's best-selling pickup for 39 straight years. A four-inch rough country lift kit will be given away, concert tickets, wild adventure passes and gift certificates, and many other prizes to be given away. Each Wednesday in January is Ladies' Day. Ladies, come to the house good service built and get a free car wash with oil and filter change. The best time of the year to buy new tires on only $5 over cost. Come celebrate with us and save big money with huge Mike Birch Ford discounts, Ford rebates, or 0% interest. You pick the deal and save. If you're looking for an incredible deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle from the dealer who has always put you first, stop the search. Call the all-new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. Online at MikeBirchFord.com. This is Sammy Dixon. Thank you. Thank you very much for your business. All right, one minute after 8 o'clock, you're listening to The Big Dog, WIFO-FM in Jessup, 105.5 in your FM dial. Thursday morning, 14th day of January, Butch Hubbard here with you on The Big Dog. Lots of sunshine today, mostly sunny, high today, around 63 degrees. The Audubon Harbor levels of 13.2 feet and falling, 30 degrees here in southeast Georgia. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty, located on Macon Street in downtown Jessup. By Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway, B&C Collision Center in Scriven, and also brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. Well, Bob, I see you sitting here this morning, so that means you didn't win the lottery. No, nope. you got to call my dad. My ticket was sold in Florida, so <laughs> yeah, I think you'd have heard from him by now. <laughs> of course, he may not even look. Sorry, he may not be. I know, I didn't even look. So here's my here's my lottery tickets from yesterday. You know, I told you yesterday that I'd gotten two. Well, I got two more. Okay. And I, I want to see if I matched at least. Did you match any of the numbers? No. No? No. Nope. I didn't match no. any of the numbers. No, no, none of the numbers. Okay, let's see here. The, the, the winner, 827. Let's see. I don't have an 8 or I don't have a Four different lines of numbers here. One, two lines, three, four lines. 827, 34. I don't have 30 and 4 in any of those four lines. I don't have 27 in any of those lines. Four. Oh, I've got four and one of them. Hey, i got one number here, Bob. One number and one of them. Uh, 19. Uh, don't have 19. Powerball of 10. i got 13, 3, 14, and 25. So i got one number in four different tries here. And that don't mean diddly squat. <laughs> you me. I didn't have any numbers. <laughs> no numbers. I should have picked my own numbers. Should have picked your own numbers. It takes too long there. Yeah, yeah, it does take a long time. I'd always take, I'd at least have 34, because I always take 34. Oh, so you do you always take 34? Yeah. Herschel Walker's number? Herschel's number, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Herschel's number. 19, Johnny Unitas number, so it's, you know, 8's Willie Starchel, so, you know. <laughs> 12, Terry Bradshaw, 21, Clemente, so that's, I should have just picked them. So if I would pick the numbers, I would have had at least uh, three. You'd have had three if you'd have, if you'd have done it yourself, huh? Yeah, I don't still wouldn't mean squat. No. no, but uh, uh, three different states, three different winners out there, two different million dollar winners here from what you said here, in, in, or what the news said here in, in uh, Georgia. Yeah, one in Douglas, one in Douglasville, and one in Atlanta. Uh, people marched, uh, matched all one, two, three, four, five numbers and not the Powerball, so they get the million. A million dollars. A million dollars. See Still not chump change. <laughs> Those are winners right there. Yeah, those are yeah, yeah. So we had two million dollar winners in the state of Georgia, according to Georgia News Network, and uh, so I, I think it, last week they had a million dollar winner in Savannah. Yeah, so, uh, somewhere in yeah, well, Savannah. somewhere in the state of Georgia they did have a million dollar winner. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. So everything just um, it starts over again. California, Florida, and Tennessee, where the three tickets were sold. Um, so those folks will split the $1.5 billion and uh, have life on Easy Street for the rest of their life. Of course, as we mentioned yesterday, Bob, they'll have more relatives and friends and people wanting to borrow money and more charities hitting them up and and uh, all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, they'd be guys, guys like I just read a story of a guy in White Cross won $30 million a couple years ago. He now he's in jail because he got charged with possession of drugs. So yeah. Some people just can't handle money. So well, if you can't handle it beforehand, you won't be able to handle it once you get it. Yeah. Money doesn't solve 
No, no, no. If you can't, if you can't handle uh, thirty thousand a year, you're not going to be able to handle three hundred thousand a year. Like all those NFL players that make billions, they can't sell a trouble. Yeah. So yeah, all those, yeah. And you take a look, look at Mike Tyson. He made multi millions of dollars and basically broke. And Evander Holyfield. There's many, many of these athletes have made just tremendous amounts of money. It's just they got broke at a higher level than most of us. Aaron Hernandez made millions. He's in jail, charged with murder. You know, you see it all the time. So mm -hmm. money does not solve. No, it brings it bring, for a lot of folks. It brings out their worst personality traits, and we see that with these um, uh, entertainers and athletes who, who've had trouble in the past. Uh, so they get uh, millions of dollars, and and then it just brings out their worst personality traits. Now, if a good person wins, then they'll usually do good things with it. This it was just amazing to watch the national news before the drawing to see. I so said they sold eighteen thousand tickets a minute were being sold, mm -hmm. and some people going in there with. I mean, they were just buying. I mean, it was crazy. I said, like, why would people spend that much money for? No, because you only have a one in two hundred ninety-two million chance of winning. So if you buy, uh, you know, five hundred dollars worth, it really ain't going to change that much. I mean, I get that you have to have a ticket to be in it, but. To spend all that money yeah. on a pipe train, you know, yeah. chances are, you know, they tell you the chances are slim and none. You know, mm -hmm. they said so. I don't, I don't. It was just crazy to watch those people throw all their money towards those tickets. So just crazy. But congrats to the people that did win. I said okay. I'm sure they'll find out. And I said they were not going to jump out there right away. And say, yeah, you don't want to jump right out there right away. You want to get with the tax attorney, lawyer, all that kind of stuff. You want to get your team set up there, ready to, to protect yourself. Change your phone number. You know, you got to do something. You know, they give you all this advice because people, when people find out that you've got money, they'll come after it. Ten dollars entertainment to check to see my numbers and find out I had no numbers. So thank you very much. <laughs> Oh well, but I'll do it again. You know, if he gets up to one point whatever billion, I'll, I'll spend another ten dollars. Oh, so you don't need forty million. It starts at you. You, you got to have that big money, huh, Bob? <laughs> I just I don't think I just don't think about it. I don't. Play yeah, I don't think I hardly ever play. Yeah. This is about the only time I ever play because everybody's talking about it. You know, I play those scratch offs every now and then, but I don't play. I don't play it regular. Some people play the same numbers all year long. And all yep, that, so play those same numbers. Just, I'm not that. I'm just not into it. Yeah. Some people make a uh, make a, a game out of it. They make a, but I did a, a five tickets almost yesterday. a career out of it. I waited for the drawing to see. Oh, you did? Oh yeah. yeah, I did. That's all. I wanted to see if I was going to be a billionaire. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I got up this morning, took a shower, and then at six, six o'clock, I was listening to news from on Fox News Radio on a radio station, and I heard the um, three. The, the numbers were from three different states other than Georgia. I said, oh, well, <laughs> that's some, some, some people have luck, some people don't. I've never had luck. You've seen those, you know, you've been to those. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ducks on the banquet stall. You, you see those people that you now, you go, how do they do it? Everybody how do they do it? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's chance. There's no skill involved with it at all. They just some somehow. People, some people just have to have luck. Yeah, that's and true. And they just seem to win all the time. So, oh, well. Absolutely amazing. If you have any questions or comments for Bob and I here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show, text them in at 912-427-3711, 912-427-3711. You can text them in. And we do have a text right now. I guess somebody was listening to your sports there, Bob, or something like that. Are you and Jonathan talking about sure? He says, regarding Johnny Manziel, when is old enough to know better? <laughs> supposed to uh, when is supposed to okay here we go when is old enough to know better supposed to kick in he's 23 going on 16 <sighs> it never kicks in I mean, he just doesn't get it though you know the, the 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 issue is when does he become a professional that's what all of those people in Cleveland try to tell him you know they, in most times Veterans will take you under your wings and say, this is how you do it. This right. is what you have to, you know, you hear it all the time. They have these classes, you know, every rookie goes to that rookie mm -hmm. symposium. They right. tell them how to, you know, Johnny Manziel just wants to be body animal. I mean, I think he has an issue with alcohol. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think it's obvious he's been to rehab one time, but 
you see it with many people until you realize you have a problem, which sometimes is too late for people, but that's the only time you can help somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm sure as parents have tried to help them, people in that organization have tried to help them, the coaches tried to help them, mm -hmm. players have tried to help them, but until he wants to help himself, there's no help in Johnny Manziel. But it's sad to see him throw his – the sad thing is when he's on the field – you can see his talent. He's right. a talented quarterback. He can play in the NFL, you know, but he just can't seem to get his life together off the field. I mean, he's in concussion protocol, supposed to be at the facility, and instead he's wearing a disguise in Vegas with a wig and sunglasses at a poker table. So, I mean. That's nuts. It's crazy. That's absolutely nuts. And that's why the coach that took this job, the story coming out of Cleveland is, before he accepted the job, he told management he wants Manziel out of there. He doesn't want to deal with him at all. He doesn't want he doesn't want that circus. So, so that's the sad thing. So now Manziel is out there on the free market, and the question is, does anybody else take a chance with him? But as they say all the time in the NFL, talent trumps trouble. So you know, as long as you're talented and you can play, somebody out there is going to have a place for you. Just like that guy from Cincinnati that gave Antonio Brown a concussion. Right. The laundry list of his trouble out of college, his trouble in the NFL, how many times he's been fined. I mean, he's just a dirty, dangerous player. And now he's been suspended three games, but it's just his talent trumps trouble. You know, he's a talented athlete, so people are going to take a chance because the ultimate goal is to win. And we see it all the time. Everybody wants to win. That's true. But Johnny Manziel is just a, to me, it's a sad story because he definitely has an issue. And until he realizes he has an issue and gets himself help, he's just on the road to destruction. But like I say, right now, he's on the outside looking in. If anybody can give him a job, they keep saying Jerry Jones is infatuated with him. You know, he's from Texas A&M, has that Texas fan base. You know, if he brings him to Dallas behind Tony Romo, he thinks it'll be a good thing. So time will tell, but, you know, but the. For a coach to say, look, you got to get rid of that guy before I even think about taking a job. And right. Said, well, we want you to take the job, so we'll release him. So, so he's out of here. He's out of Cleveland. They gave him a chance. They took him. They took, gave him a chance, gave him a chance, gave him a chance, and he just kept, you know, poking him in the eye and says, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. You think that, uh, you know, not only did he get cut from Cleveland, but apparently there's, you know, LeBron James has that agency where they take athletes in and they're part of their – advertising agency and all that. Right. Even LeBron cut him loose. I mean, and they're both from Cleveland. You know, they're both. You know, right. And LeBron's a Cleveland hometown grown person. But LeBron James said, look, enough's enough. We can't. <laughs> He's killing our business. We got to get rid of this guy. So you think that would have woke him up. But I don't think anything's going to wake him up. He just wants to do what he wants to do, which is go party and drink and have a good time. And like I said, I think he has an issue with alcohol. Yeah. Well, it looks that way. And, you know, we've all seen people go, go down that, uh, that dark path there on, on alcohol and all the reasoning and logic and everything in the world uh, doesn't work with him. And coming out of college, he was fun to watch. You know, a lot of teams wanted him. Some people passed on him. But talent-wise, he has the talent to play. <laughs> okay. Here's somebody just texted in. He said, they say, Butch and Bob. One of your local travel baseball teams is now selling 50-50 raffle tickets. You have a greater chance of winning our drawing, and we can bring you tickets if you like. <laughs> so there's a traveling baseball team out there selling 50-50 tickets to try to raise funds for their travel expenses, I guess. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of other things that you can go out there where you have a better chance. You should not have a chance to win you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, but you know. I said some people are lucky, some people aren't. I mean, we said all the time. I mean, how many dogwood festivals have we been to? How many, uh, how many other homes since have we been 1992? To? I've purchased tons of tickets at Dogwood, nice. at um, we, Odom Day, we had all at Arch Fest, and I've never, never won, won anything. anything. Right. I'm the same boat. So and we, neither of you, and you've no, been since the early 80s. But I always try. But yeah. Like I said, some people are like some people. Are. <laughs> it's just after, but you go back and think if you saved all that money to just put it away somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're supposedly helping out a good cause there, Bob. You're not buying them to win. You're buying them to help. That's right. Well, 
But I'm just saying, some people have luck, some people don't. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter how many tickets you got. Um, but it's, you know, it's fun to try. Like I said, it's a good donation. But I keep, you know, I'm going back and thinking about all these raffle tickets I've bought over the years and all these donations I made. I said, Touchdown Club's coming up with their big drawing. I've had a ticket every year now. I haven't even come close to winning any money. So, <laughs> just not lucky. <laughs> we just got to earn it, Bob. We don't, we don't not, win it. Just not a lucky person. Yeah, well, that's the way it is sometimes. That's the way it is. All right, uh, got the big NFL playoff games coming up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday again. Yeah, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. There's like eight teams left, you know. It's funny, you know, everybody's talking, it's the Super Bowl 50th anniversary, and everybody's kind of getting nostalgic. They like to see Kansas City and Green Bay play. Oh, yeah, played, yeah. They played in the first Super Bowl. So That's true. How neat would it be for them to play in the 50th Super Bowl? So Kansas City's got a good shot. They're red hot. They've won 11 in a row, but they got to go into New England, and Brady's got all his weapons back. So they'll be awfully tough to beat. And Green Bay just – Played Arizona a couple weeks ago at Lambeau Field and got destroyed. So they're playing Arizona at Arizona. So most people think their season's come to an end on Sunday. So it'll be interesting. You know, I'm going to stick with my Super Bowl pick, Pittsburgh, Seattle, a rematch of Super Bowl 40 10 years later. So that's my prediction. Both six seeds, both got by round one. So Pittsburgh's got all kinds of issues. You know, it's really Pittsburgh going to play. It's going to be your heart there, Bob. I mean, man, they got issues all over the place. I always pick with my heart. I can't pick against my Steelers. <laughs> Big Ben's going to shoot up that shoulder and start throwing it down the field. That's right. Antonio Put that cortisone in there. Put that steroids in the in the shoulder. Antonio Brown's got to come out of concussion protocol and get out there and play. So hopefully he will. But the report on Tuesday said it was not looking good. So. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati's saying he's faking it, so I don't think he's faking. Uh, I saw his head hit off the turf and just lay there for a good three, four minutes. So I don't think Antonio Brown's faking anything. So just hoping and praying he's able to play. And a lot of players can get through that concussion protocol in a week and get back out on the field. So if there's any way he can play, I think he'll play. So got my fingers crossed, been praying every night that both play this Sunday. So I need him to win. But Roethlisberger said yesterday he hasn't even thrown since Saturday. And so he said he's waiting for the doctor to clear him to throw the ball. But he said if he can't throw it more than 25 yards down the field, he probably won't play. But oh, wow. I think he's you – know, he said if they can find a way to get him ready, paint medication, whatever it takes to throw, he's ready to go. So he's a warrior. He'll be out there. I, I believe both will play Sunday. You know, they said this will be the funniest game at the NFL season because if Roethlisberger can't throw it 20 yards, Peyton can't throw it 20 yards, so the two quarterbacks will be out there throwing it less than 20 yards. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of short passes, huh? A lot of, a lot of short defense passes. Defense up. Running. It's a defensive battle. So. Yeah. It's the last game on Sunday, so he's got, you know, like I said, he's got the day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so I think he'll be good to go. I think he's playing. Yeah, we'll see, Bob. You know, he was on well, another Sunday. You know, he still had, holds the record. You know, he wasn't – he was the backup quarterback when he went to Cleveland. And the star quarterback got hurt. He came off the bench and threw for 389 yards, and it's still an NFL record this day. So. Oh, wow. So, <clears throat> I think he's playing. Antonio Brown's playing. Still, I don't know if they can win, though. Peyton Manning scares me to death. He's what still Peyton Manning. Yes, he's Peyton Manning. Every time I told you, oh, we're going to go Brock Osweiler. I told you, he's Peyton Manning. <laughs> Well, he's ready to play. He's playing. He's ready, huh? He's focused. He's mad. He's upset. He's one of the best quarterbacks ever step on the field. He's That's true. He's one of the best. No um, doubt about that. Pittsburgh secondary against him, scared to death. But Father Time's uh, Father Time just uh, doesn't overlook anybody, Bob. I'm scared about Peyton Manning. I said it looks like another Manning Brady championship matchups. What it's looking like. So we'll see. They've had some battles in the past. So. But Denver's got a heck of a defense. That's the thing that scares me. And, uh, it's a very scary game. And it's, they're down there. They're like a touchdown underdog. Uh, Pittsburgh is? Pittsburgh is. Okay. <laughs> but I'm still going with my Steelers. I have the picks tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, right? I can't even Tomorrow is Friday. Friday. Today is Thursday, Bob. Okay. I have, have the picks tomorrow. Went two and two last weekend. Did get the national championship game, though, right? So three and two. So not too bad. Okay. 
Right. But I gotta think hard about these picks. I know I'm going with my heart in Steelers games. <laughs> yeah, because just be forewarned out there. You know? Yeah, you are going with your heart with yeah. Pittsburgh. I can tell you that. Yeah, right I'm now. going with Pittsburgh and Seattle all the way. All the way. Huh? All the way. Okay. The two six seeds in the Super Bowl. Wouldn't that be something? It's been done before. Yeah. Pittsburgh made this a six seed years ago, so they can do it. As long as Crawford and Burgers can throw the ball, we're in good shape. The question is, can he throw the ball? Yeah, can he throw the ball? Came off the bench Saturday. Yeah. Let him down the field. Thanks to Cincinnati going brain dead. I like how they call it. They call it the meltdown at Paul Brown Stadium. And that was a meltdown. That was a meltdown. How they fumbled. I don't know how they fumbled, but it was good. Just trying to roll the clock out and they fumbled. I said, Many times we've seen that. We shouldn't even be there. So, you know, we're just playing on house money right now. <laughs> <laughs> we should already be out at home. That's right. So. Okay. okay. Anything from here on out is just gravy, so if Roethlisberger can throw the ball, Antonio Brown's healthy, the Steelers can win. But I promise you, I've already said in my sportscast, if if Landry Jones is the quarterback for Steelers, we have no shot. No shot. No, none. none. Landry Jones. Where do you play college football? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. It's okay. not very good. Pittsburgh needs to find a backup quarterback. They get Michael Vick. I haven't heard his name mentioned at all, so I don't know if he's I guess he's still on the roster. I saw he's him practice. Still the roster? He's still there. Okay, so he's still there. He was, he's been inactive for the last several. You know, what's he doing? Yeah, what's he doing? Get, 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 him, get, the, get him ready. He's better than Landry Jones. <laughs> 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 well, we'll find out. Well, I'm, Sunday ought to be an interesting day for yeah, Pittsburgh fans. I'll call to Mike Tomlin and say, what are we doing? Get Michael Vick out there. We don't want it Landry Jones. Really? Landry Jones is awful. Well, it shows you how hard it is to be a, a, See, there's my an NFL there. there's my there. quarterback. How can, how can Tim Tebow be in the studio booth and people like Landry Jones and all these backup quarterbacks are on NFL rosters? Yeah. Makes, all Tebow does is win. He doesn't win Purdy, but he wins. <laughs> in fact, the last time Pittsburgh and Denver played in a playoff game, we all know what happened there. Tebow beat them. All right. Don't, yep. bring, don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I didn't. It's still, it's still a, <laughs> Still a nightmare. That's right. I Tebow still, beat Denver. I can still see it. I mean, beat Pittsburgh didn't when he was in Denver. They yep. went to overtime. First play in overtime, 85 yards. Mm -hmm. I can still picture him. My mind still brings nightmares to this day. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. But that's when I said Tebow is a winner. Tebow's a quarterback. Tebow can play. Why he can't play in the NFL, I have no idea. Well, especially when you look at some of these other quarterbacks. And they say, oh, he can't throw the ball. Well, in that game, he threw for 275 yards in the winning touchdown. So. <laughs> I take him right now for Landry Jones. Any day of the week, huh? Maybe we make a phone call later. That's, that'd be good. Could be. Tebow come back and play against the Denver Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> that would be better. Wouldn't that be something? Be with a team and you beat Pittsburgh and you were Pittsburgh and then beat Denver? That'd be a great, Wouldn't that be something? That'd be a great story. Great story. But how he's not on the NFL roster, I have no idea. I don't get it. No. All right. Sad. Well, anything going on locally? Um, we're hit on. Not much going on. Football banquets tonight. Like I said, school board met Tuesday in work session. Passed the school calendar, talking budget. So they said Denise Griffiths. I said we got to get a bunch of mob show. Denise Griffiths gave us an update on the tax situation. They say she's doing an excellent job at collecting the taxes. Eighty-four percent rate at this time, so that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yep, eighty-four percent. Let us know people are paying their tax bills in Wayne County. <laughs> We gotta pay this thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like across America, <laughs> where the people don't pay their taxes. So. Yeah. So, um, well, that's good. And uh, we had the uh, the governor gave the state of the state address, and teachers seem to be a little bit happy right now. Three percent raises and other things coming for education. If they approve the budget. Yeah. Well, of course, the the state legislator has to approve it. Yeah. This is all recommendations from the governor. So um, I'm sure that uh, they'll take a look at it. And usually they go by if the party in power usually goes by what the party governor right. says. So I would assume it's going to yeah. pass. All right. Yeah, because yeah. I'm sure he's already, already talked to the to the um, floor leaders on both sides of the uh, House and the Senate. Yeah. Football banquet tonight. They say T.Y. McGill is in town, so we look forward to talking to him. I said they kept their coach Chuck Pagano, so I'd like to get his thoughts on keeping their head coach. You know, it's rumored he was going to be fired, but they kept him. So, coaching carousel continues. Like I said, you Jackson 
gets the job Cincinnati, the <clears throat> Giants promote their offense coordinator, Ben McAdoo. So not much change in New York. So okay. I guess Eli's happy about that. At least he's been, you know, the guy's been there two years as offense coordinator. So now he's the head coach. So mm-hmm. that's an easy transition. Okay. Yeah. Another text just came in. Remember, folks, if you want to text us with a question, comment, or anything, 912 427 3711. Here's a text. How does Wayne County High School sports stack up against the teams in our new classification beginning in August? Very well. <clears throat> you know, it's a five team region. Five team mm-hmm. region. And once again, those five teams are us, us Ware, Statesboro, South Effingham, New Hampshire. Okay. So those are the five teams in the new region. We'll be moved up to 5A next year, right? We right. won't be in Quad A anymore. We will we'll be in 5A. The tough team in football, of course, be Ware County. You know? Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. You know, we've had some battles with Ware in the past. It's a good rivalry. Looking forward to it. Should yeah. be fun. Should be fun. I said the South Indian rivalry has been big in baseball and softball. So, have that rivalry in Statesboro has always been a rivalry. So, yep. Yeah. Um, and if we can line up, uh, you know, Barnes Woodland Academy and Applin County as our, um, some of our uh, off region games, it'd be a great season. All right. You got a lot of open dates to deal with non-region opponents. So right. yeah, I think Appen's on the schedule. I think Pierce County's going to be a game. So oh, we don't line up Pierce County. That's year, what right? I hear. That's, okay. the, that's the word that Pierce County signed up to play us. So I get that. I'll find out for sure tonight when I see Jody. But the word is that Pierce County's on the schedule for next year. It's good to have these border wars. It fills up the stadium. Yes, it does. Fills them right on up. People can just drive right across the county line. Plus, the travel is good. Like I said, that's what I like about the new region schedule. Don't have to go to Columbus. Don't have to go to Augusta. Don't have to go to mm-hmm. Thompson. I mean, yeah, that's good. I don't mind going away across 40 miles down the road. Pierce County, Appling County. <clears throat> like I said New Hampshire is the farthest trip. Savannah, so right. I haven't been their campus. So I don't know either. I, I don't even know where in Savannah it's located. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Either. We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. So we, we do we know yet if we played them there or here this year in football? You don't know. That's the schedule. schedule. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything going on local sports wise? Um, you know, I think um, recreation basketball is going. Is that right? Yeah, they didn't play last night. They don't play on church night, so right. Don't have. We had the scores Monday and Tuesday, so. And that action is underway. And a, lot of teams, a lot of teams playing basketball. That's good. That's good. Good to have a lot of basketball players out there. Hopefully one day they'll be Yellow Jackets. So uh, what's going on with our Yellow Jacket teams this year in terms of basketball? Man, the girls are rolling. The girls are doing well. The boys are struggling. Yeah. I think me and you can make the boys basketball team right now. That's bad, Bob. <laughs> That's how bad it is. It's bad. Where's the talent? we got to have some talent here in Wayne County in, in basketball. I can't throw it in the ocean, so I don't know. <laughs> I can't throw it in the ocean. It's bad. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying, I think me and you could make the start lineup right now. Yeah. Not very good. It's a simple game. You dribble the ball, you throw the ball up in the basket, and you guard. <laughs> but the object is you have to throw it in the basket. Okay, so what you said, New Hampstead is in Pooler. Which is good because that means you don't have to go down through Savannah. You just go up the interstate there and get off there in Pooler. Thank you very much. Someone who just sent that in. New Hampstead is in Pooler. As you know, Savannah cannot grow east anymore. <laughs> it's the ocean out there, you know. So they have to grow west. Can't grow north because there's a river there. So they're growing south and west. Basketball teams are on the road <clears throat> this weekend. They got to go to Thompson on Friday, Burke on Saturday. So they don't come back home until January 30th. So there's a long spell between the the home schedule so i said they were in action this tuesday at home against brunswick girls lost a tough one point game 47 46 and the boys got blown out and the boys are getting beat by 25 30 points a game i mean it's just mm. it's just not not fun basketball right now i know coach cotton's be pulling the hair out of his head yeah. <clears throat> i said it's just a struggle but right now there's just not a lot of talent out there yeah. um, maybe some of these other guys will come up and they'll be there and the object is to throw the ball in the basket throw the ball in the basket it's not horseshoes. Getting close don't count. Right, close doesn't count. <laughs> Hitting, hit, you, know, you got at least hit the backboard. <laughs> got at least hit the rim, huh? <laughs> well, maybe it'll come around, Bob. 
All right, we got to go. We're about through with the Butch and Bob show for the day. All right, have a good day. All right, the world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by BNC Collision Center in Scriven, by Jessup Premium Storage out here on the way across highway, by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear, and also brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty, located on Macon Street in downtown Jessup across from the Heritage Bank. All right, coming up in just a couple of moments here on the Big Dog, we'll have the latest news from Fox News Radio. And then in the next 30 minutes after that, we'll have Focus on the Family Commentary, State News from the Georgia News Network, a quick look at sports, and also what happened to this day at here.